Let's get educated. That's why we're here, to bring you the stories impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses. It's time for a little education. Well, welcome one and all. I am Katie Patrick, joined by David Fiorazzo. And we've been talking about it for some time now, and we were, we're going to just continue talking yes, about it. Yes, because, talk because Freedom Project Academy, it's our K-12 Judeo-Christian online school. It's enrolling students right now for this upcoming fall. So you need to get out there. Request your free information packet by going to freedomforschool.com. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com. And of course, don't forget to mention that you learned about it on Educated. Educated, Educated, Educated. All right, well, we have a Florida fifth grade teacher who's now under investigation after not notifying parents before showing students a movie that contained a gay character. Oh, Disney, here we go. Uh, I mean, I, I, again, my argument is always, okay, they've taken God out of the public school system. They expelled Judeo-Christian values, the Bible, the Ten Commandments. So why not? At this point, why not? But I understand. Now, this is Florida, and we did a story mm -hmm. on Florida and DeSantis and what they're doing, some great things down there, not at the university level. Well, actually, the university and the K-12. through But let's watch this video to set this up. We'll come back and we'll talk about it. First year Florida teacher Jenna Barbie is under fire for showing her fifth grade class a Disney movie, Strange World. Hey, Diazo. I didn't see you there. Her intent, she says, was to teach the class about the environment. The film features a family of explorers banding together to navigate the world. So I thought that, that was such a beautiful message to send to my kids along with working together, chasing your dreams, compassion. Instead, it led to the ire of a school board member, Shannon Rodriguez, also a parent of one of Barbie's students. I'm not going to stand by and allow this minority to infiltrate our schools. God did put me here. And Barbie says that triggered an investigation from the Florida Department of Education. Barbie showed CNN this letter she says is from the state saying, this office has determined an investigation is warranted into allegations that you engaged in inappropriate conduct. You must be Diazo. He talks about you all the time. Not all the time. Strange World features a gay character and may violate Florida's Parental Rights and Education Act, signed into law last year by Governor Ron DeSantis. The controversial bill bans certain instruction about sexual orientation and gender identity in classrooms. It is not a teacher's job to impose their beliefs upon a child. Religious, sexual orientation, gender identity, any of the above. But allowing movies such as this assist teachers in opening a door, and please hear me, they assist teachers in opening a door for conversations that have no place in our classrooms. And um, the teacher said it was for the purpose of teaching about environmental, which is a religion, right? Putting the uh, worship Mother Earth and human beings are the problem. That is a religion, the environmental movement. Um, but also the gay agenda. And it's interesting, at Florida, they're a little sensitive to the Disney the <laughs> issue Disney. because of Disney. Disney's yeah. radicalism and their ideology. And, and they're sensitive to this because of what DeSantis and his battle with the schools over Disney, all this stuff. So it's a lot of angles to this story. Well, and I could see, because okay, I've noticed. Um, You've noticed. I've noticed. So we're in Florida. Disney's prevalent, obviously, in Florida. Of course, I'm, I'm trying to put myself in her shoes in terms of, okay, she's a fifth grade teacher, first year. Uh, you saw in that original interview that she was wearing a necklace that's from the Disney movie Raya. It's the dragon. So clearly she's a Disney fan right. of sorts. So yeah. in her mind, she may have thought this is one of Disney's latest movies and it talks about the environment in some sort of way. And maybe innocently she didn't think of it because she, to her it's very acceptable, common, whatever. So yeah. for her it wasn't like making a statement. It was just like a part of it. I could see that coming as being a first year teacher, especially because guess what? You're getting taught in teacher school all the time. Oh my LGBT goodness. plus everything. <clears throat> so for her, I could see why she didn't think of it. Now what's interesting too, in addition to this happening, is how it was the school board a school board mom who had a student in the class and that's how they found out so that's how the, oh, then the, good. Good so that's what barbie the teacher is saying well <clears throat> this mom who's also a school board member is abusing her power being a school board person so it's like yes but it, 
you're saying then if she wasn't on the school board, like no one would have found out about this and then it would have exactly. been okay. Like, you know, so exactly. that's where this dynamic comes in. Well, the interesting push is the environmentalism. That was her purpose for playing it, that angle. But I do want to mention Strange World and there was one other Disney animated feature that bombed at the box office. Two, it's never happened before in Dis- Disney. Buzz Lightyear. Ah, Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear, Lightyear. because of the LGBTQ themes. Well, that's about the environment of And space. Strange World. Those two bombed at the box office. You know what you could have done? You could have watched... First time in history. I am a big fan of Encanto. If you want a, a Disney movie that is actually about family and coming together and working through things. And there's a lot of environment stuff in there. I'm just saying it's a great... That Encanto... The songs will get stuck in your head. Trust me. Could okay. have showed that one. Could have showed that one, but she didn't. She <laughs> made a poor choice. All right. Still to come, a shocking series of videos have emerged on social media from our neck of the woods. In fact, about 10 miles from where I live, a Wisconsin middle school that shows students beating up their peers just so they can post it online. We're talking about this and how parents and the administration claim they never knew anything about it. Next. Today's episode is brought to you by Freedom Project Academy. Take back your kids' education. FPA's fully accredited classical curriculum provides live, on-demand, and homeschool courses built on Judeo-Christian values. Request your information packet and save 10% on tuition by visiting freedomforschool.com. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com. Well, we have another ongoing investigation, and it includes a local school district here in Wisconsin. We're talking uh, about Shawano, spelled Shawano for any of you who are not outside of the state. Outside of the state (laughs) would probably pronounce it as such. It's Shawano. Shawano police are looking at what happened at the middle school of the Shawano school district. Now, an assault of a middle school student by another student, uh, it's being looked into. And then there was a letter that was sent out to parents about it. Okay, so this is kind of two separate things, but it all comes together. So there was an assault of a student by a student, and then the school responded with a letter. And that letter said that we're writing uh, to you to let you know, to provide accurate information and uh, avoid rumors about an incident that occurred at the middle school. Yes, always to avoid the rumors. Too late. Now, a student was involved in assaulting another student at the middle school. The incident was handled immediately. The student was not seriously physically injured and returned to school today, yet we have zero tolerance for any violence in our schools. This incident is under investigation in collaboration with the Shawano Police Department. We are following the school district's established disciplinary procedures, and we are following up with all involved individuals. Now, that's the first part. Okay. The letter goes on. Additionally, we became aware of a social media post about the incident through a parent email to the superintendent. We applaud the parent for emailing us, and we encourage all students and parents to contact any trusted adult in the school system if they ever have any concerns. And it's our highest priority and all the other jazz. Okay, okay, okay. So here's the deal. There's more. Take a look. Police in the Shawano School District now investigating this incident took place at the middle school yesterday. You'll see a student viciously attack another student, and it appears it was done for the purpose of being caught on video. That assault was then posted on an Instagram account that features other fights from the school. But let's go specifically to the parent of the student that was attacked in that video. Was she aware of the assault? How did social media play into that with her? Right, so no members of the actual school district administration reached out um, about the assault the day that it happened yesterday. She found out online and she said she wished she knew the extent of that, of the actual assault itself. So she would have taken her son to the doctor. She said it was devastating to see that. And, you know, while there's been people that have reached out and words of support, um, you know, she says she doesn't think it would have been handled at all by the district if it wasn't caught on camera. Jeez. Oh, so what you're saying is that this bullying is happening and the parents aren't being notified of the the one who's the victim wasn't even notified, had to find out online because apparently this is now a trend in the school where they they just want to assault someone and then for the sake of being on yeah. Instagram, yeah, on Twitter, on, on just so they... Social media. The social media. Now, it that video was posted on Instagram 
on an account that is now deleted. Um, the account had multiple videos of students hitting each other at the middle school. So this has been going on. I wonder why parents are outraged. I wonder, hmm? <clears throat> now, the one one positive since this has happened is that the use of cell phones was banned in the school yes. as of uh, a couple days like that, that afternoon then when they finally talked about it. According to Lieutenant Mike Musolf from the Shawano Police Department and president of the Shawano School Board, you know, in small towns, you can be pretty much anything. You're <laughs> a lieutenant with the police department and you're president of the school board. Uh, he said that bullying has been something that's been discussed throughout the district and the police department for years. It's something you try to get a handle on and you keep trying to stop it, but it doesn't. And he also said that the district uh, is going to bring in law enforcement and school resource officers to decide disciplinary action. Okay, yeah. Speaking of that disciplinary action, so again, you're out in public at a game sitting on in the, in the bleachers or let's just say on a park bench and someone comes up and punches you Pops several you in the times. Face. Yeah. That's assault mm -hmm. and the person needs to be arrested. Um, that file, uh, Charges need to be filed. But in the public schools, which this happens every day, every day in almost every school around the country, but some student or teacher student thing, but usually students, some kid is being picked on and punched. And uh, this has just gone way too far because now it's entertainment because they put it up on social media, Katie. And here's the thing. This has become, since we implemented this years ago, decade, over a decade ago, the whole like no bullying policies yeah. like ever since those policies became a thing in the schools guess what's gotten worse bullying because now it's cool Ooh, i'm doing something dangerous now it's like on everyone's radar the teacher's radar the administrator's radar of like ooh, it's actually dangerous so now the students think oh this is great i get attention from it i don't mm. care if it's negative attention it's attention and the and, and you combine that at the same time yeah. with the social media and once the iphones came out narcissism narcissism <laughs> uh, you know so that it's like oh this is how i get my attention and i guarantee you whoever this account whoever these middle schoolers are that's how they're viewing this is i'm going to get attention from it attention mm -hmm. attention which means they're probably not getting attention in other areas like healthy attention so they're going to act out like this and think they're cool by physically assaulting and that's you're using the correct terminology here of physically assaulting not just bullying bullying is zero tolerance like the zero tolerance right. i'm gonna say it crap has been going on for so long and it it's a direct correlation to how bad bullying has gotten so the moral of the story is shano police department charged this kid with assault physical assault well there there were several videos in it we saw at least three incidents of kids beating up other kids so again this is not high school this is the middle, middle school, school in this case so these are young kids yep well coming up we have a rags to riches story in connecticut connecticut as a middle school is completely turned around after nearly all hope was lost we're going to talk about that one next today's show is sponsored by our friends at my pillow save up to 66 percent on pristine quality bedding towels slippers signature pillows and much more when you use the code educated that's e-d-u-c-a-t-e-d educated support this show and a great american company so we cover stories all the time that appear to be like free for all zones yes. as in the story we just covered about the middle school where yes. you know you can just go up to someone pop them in the nose and eh, it's a free-for-all well one connecticut school uh was truly actually described by students teachers and everyone else as a free-for-all zone but they turned it around it's a good story david really yes so students at teachers memorial global studies magnet school Yes, that's a mouthful, but that's what it's called. Um, in Norwich, Connecticut, they have about 390 students. Last year, students were out there roaming the halls during class. They were texting each other. They were fighting. Oh, shocker, there's fighting happening in the schools. Uh, they even were getting DoorDash food delivered to the school. Gosh. Because why not? Um, it was a free-for-all, right? So parents were swearing at school staff. There's a lot of bad things that were happening with this school. It was so bad that the superintendent, Kristen Stringfellow, the assistant superintendent, uh, Tamara Gloucester, and other administrators and support staff actually moved into the school full time. 
they they couldn't work in their actual offices. It's like, nope, we're setting up camp here in the school to monitor what the heck is going on. And so um, they basically moved in so that they could do what they call a full reset um, of discipline policies and school rules and end that DoorDash. They were just, they wanted to end the DoorDash. Now, <laughs> Because I find it interesting. I'm like, how did how did they actually DoorDash? They Can actually explain, explain in for, the article. For some people that don't who, know oh, what, what DoorDash, DoorDash is. is yeah. Basically, ever since pandemic times, it's really become a thing where you can order food online and there's somebody who gets paid to go to said restaurant, whatever, whatever fast, fast food, food yeah. restaurant yeah. or local restaurant maybe pick up the food for you. You've already paid for it on your phone. And they get and paid. They deli- and they'll get paid a little cut of it yeah. and they will deliver it to your house or to or wherever, wherever you are <laughs> in this case a to school, school. <laughs> all right so uh the article explained that doordash would come and ring the bell and i uh who basically the administrator saying this and i would go to the front or gloucester would go to the front and look at this poor delivery person and say what you're here to deliver this to a child this is again coming from the superintendent <laughs> and this, this is a middle school right well, no, it's a, it's a whole, it, yeah, yeah, it is a middle school, magnet middle school uh, with 390 students. So, and the child was expecting me, again, string fellow, the superintendent, she's saying this, and the child was expecting me to take it, tip the man, <laughs> and bring it down to the eighth grade math class. It was bizarre. This, <laughs> I mean, the student smart enough to be able to do that, but yeah, anyway. Now, Stringfellow uh, said that cell phones were everywhere, escalating confrontations and enabling the takeout food orders. <laughs> she was really adamant in, the, in this article about this DoorDash being quashed. It's was, it was kind, of, kind of fascinating. Now, school rules require students to store their cell phones in their lockers at the start of the school day. Students would text one another all day, class to class, grade level to grade level. Uh, a girl would accuse another girl spending time with her boyfriend. A boy would post a photo on Snapchat of himself with a friend's girlfriend. Fights would start among students in different school wings who otherwise would not have seen one another. So this is, a, again, a middle school. And this is, it's, where are the, te- like, what are the teachers doing during this whole thing? And you're maybe wondering, how did this not get shut down? Well, it did. So I'm starting with all the bad chaos that was happening. Okay. And we're going to quickly get to the good stuff. Now, parents were ba- mad because um, enforcing the cell phone ban actually angered parents. So they did finally put a cell phone ban into place. And of course, the parents got mad. You need to have support by the parents for these things to work. But eventually, again, this does have a happy ending. Um, They wanted to be able to reach their kid in emergencies, which makes me think they wanted to reach their kids at all times of the day just to ask them questions because that's what I've seen uh, by a lot of students and parents in the classroom. Um, Anyway, a new principal named Raina Northcutt arrived last spring uh, before she departed for maternity leave in May, and she returned this school year. She's our, our hero She's our protagonist in this whole event. Okay. Uh, Overcrowded classes were split and deans of climate and culture were were added to each middle school grade level. Norwich reinstated school resource officers in both middle schools and one for the elementary school. So this like whole district area kind of did better because there's actually a couple schools that are involved with them. Now, administrators praise the global SRO, Robert McKinney, for building special relationships with the students. Now, that's a student resource officer. So you have... Actually, good example of adults showing what it means to be an adult and be respectful and knowing that there's authority there who, if something does happen, will actually take that authority. That's a good thing. Um, And the main thing was a change in the student mindset. Hmm. Now, Northcutt cited subtle changes that helped improve student behavior. Teachers greet students at the front sidewalk each morning to start each day on a good footing. After the brief homeroom session, all students have a 20-minute, this is the part that's kind of, eh, okay, yeah. social-emotional learning oh class. In the rear corner of every classroom is a uh, cons- kinesthetic chair, the calming corner, for any student who feels the need to step back and recompose. Northcutt reactivated the student council, with six, six students charged with organizing events, communicating students' needs to the school, and addressing issues. Um, and so what they're doing is making it so the students actually have order, structure to their day. Mm-hmm. Like, when you act, this is what like young minds crave, structure of some sort. As a parent of toddlers, structure is needed so when we have in schools across the nation teachers acting as children or acting as like when teachers are trying to act like students and be friends with them and just kind of go with the flow and do whatever it doesn't provide structure 
And if you don't provide structure, then that's when you get chaos. They need structure. And that's what happens. And discipline, by the way. Now, here's a, a, a positive example, David. Yes. Help me explain this positive example that happened uh, with that Principal Northcutt explained about one of the students. Principal Northcutt described eighth grader Nyasa Martin, 14 years old, as a model student. She plans to go to Norwich Technical High School and study biotech nursing. And that's a big change from last year. Uh, Northcutt first met Nyasa last May when the student was expelled for an undisclosed transgression. And uh, she said, I did my time and I'm back. I definitely improved my mindset. I'm definitely nicer, more understanding. It's all about you if you're motivated. So Norcutt said she was encouraged right away when the student heading into expulsion wished her principal good luck with motherhood as Northcutt was preparing to go on maternity leave. Yeah, so this is a good story. Turn it around. Yes. Structure. Structure. Yes. All right, well. We are structured in this show, and that means you know that up next, we have our favorite Babylon Bee headlines. Stay tuned. If you have a smartphone, tablet, Roku, or Apple TV, consider downloading the Freedom Project media app. It's 100% free and includes all of our weekly shows, plus lecture series, archive programs, and award-winning animated videos for families like the Presidential Minute, Battles of America, and Heroes of the West. Don't rely on the social media giants to keep you informed. Simply download the Freedom Project media app from your app store and allow notifications. And we'll let you know when a new video is ready. All right, are you guys ready for some satire? Before we wrap up the show for today, we are going to look at everyone's favorite satire site, the Babylon Bee. Here are this week's top five Babylon Bee headlines. All right, we're going to open the envelope. Katie Patrick has not seen any of these headlines. We picked our favorite ones, and we're going to decide which one should be named Queen of the Hive. We start with Biden finally draws larger crowd than Trump. Next, mm. yeah, Biden heads to Beach House to recuperate after grueling five-hour week. Next, media admits they lied about that Russia collusion thing, but they are totally telling the truth about everything else. Uh, next one, genius. Elon Musk saves 22% on Twitter executive salaries by hiring female CEO. And finally, Dad punishes misbehaving son by giving him Sports Illustrated swimsuit <laughs> issue. No, okay, bad, Katie, okay. there are like three. There's that some are, solid ones in there. Three that are you tied for my. You have to understand, yeah, on favorite. that very first one though, the whole Biden drawing the large crowd. Yeah, you had crowd. to see you the to picture. See the image, it's it's because they're gonna cross. The yeah, because Biden's crowd is at the border. They, he's the border. drawing. They're not. A yeah, you get it. Bigger crowd yeah. of illegal immigrants. The best thing about Babylon Bee, by the way, is the fact that they can incorporate so many components of what's happening on and put it like or happening yeah. now and like put yeah. it into one headline. I appreciate that about you, Babylon Bee. Now, my favorite um, and that swimsuit edition one got me chuckling out loud, but it isn't my favorite. Hmm. Um, I'd have to go one one prior to that. The beach um, house? The Elon Musk. Okay. Uh, you know, shouldn't it have been 23? Three percent, isn't it? Seventy-seven percent women make. Oh, you know these things. Shouldn't, shouldn't be, you know, since women make seventy-seven percent, or is it seventy-eight percent? You're aware but of these. I things. don't know because I don't, you don't believe in those numbers. Uh, but yeah, go Elon Musk about the whole okay gender um, equality. The one, also one that may have to be explained was, you know, Biden has spent I don't know how much of a percentage of his time on vacation. I think it was forty percent, a it's lot of time insane. on vacation. And so that's why this one's funny with the grueling five-hour work week. But, but I'll, I'll just say, being a, uh, not a fan of the media and have been writing about uh, media yeah. bias for my whole writing career, blogging right. and then being an author, I've got to say media <laughs> admits they lied about that collu Russian collusion thing, but they're totally telling the truth about everything else. I, yeah, I feel, sure they yeah, are. Yeah, all their shirt or their their shows should be called. I swear. <laughs> yeah. I swear. Like I swear it's yeah. the truth. I swear. Yeah, sure I swear. they are. I swear. Yeah, you can trust them. No, go to MRC mm -hmm. Media Research Center. MRC.org Media Research Center. They do great work there. Newsbusters and all that. 
Now, if you are a fan of this show, and I bet you are because you're watching it here at the end, so please, if you could, like, comment, share the video if you're watching us out there on the social media platforms. For David and myself, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and thank you for supporting this show. Until next time, stay educated.